<clears throat> yes, yep. I think uh, I'm positive about Hong Kong because everything looks so bad. <laughs> and this is the criteria to buy something when even the contrarian are very negative. I mean, everything is not one single good news about Hong Kong. The only thing I can say is, is very seldom that everything looks as bad as it does about anything as it does now about Hong Kong. And therefore, prices are low. Now, if I tell someone in you know, a Hong Kong, they will say, you're crazy. Because of this, 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 it won't go up. Then I tell him, yes, you're right. Is everything is bad, but that's why it may go up. At the beginning of the year, I wrote three times about Turkey. I said the currency had collapsed and stocks as a result of the currency collapse had become cheap. Then, of course, someone with, with connections to Turkey said, you must be crazy to buy Turkey. They won't move and this, everything is bad and Erdogan is an idiot and so on. I said, to him, if he, it, it may be that Erdogan is an idiot, but he's in good company in the world. <laughs> but I don't think he's an idiot at all. I disagree with him, with his economic policies. But the fact is, at that time, Turkish stocks had become cheap. The Turkish fund went now from 18 to 27. And where are the Dow Jones and the S&P? So one went up almost 40%. And the others went down 25%. So I, I'm just trying to explain, if you just look uh, or invest according to what is good, you will always pay a high price. You should always invest into the worst type of things. That's where the big gains come from. Yeah, I think Howard Marks, um, a quite a well-known investor, recently said you should look at the uninvestable opportunities that people don't even look at. <laughs> yeah. If I were young, I would go now to Russia and look for some assets in Russia. Or in Maripol in uh, Ukraine, or I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's some opportunities. And look, wars are made by people who want to make money. Don't ever think that wars... Ordinary people don't want to go to war. Ordinary people want to stay in their homes, watch TV, look after the garden, look after their businesses, go out drinking and whoring and whatnot. Nobody wants war. Only rich people want to war. People sitting in an armchair in Washington, a coward like this Victoria Nuland, who's never been in the military, never in the army, never done anything except government, she wants to go to war because she doesn't like Putin, period. Yeah, it's really interesting. This is the reality of wars. I mean, many social observers, philosophers, and so forth have always observed war is always done by people who benefit from war. And we know some of these people who benefit from wars because they finance both sides. 